10. Come and see. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which translated, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Reflection what first drew you into the Christian faith? Maybe you grew up in the church, maybe you came to faith through the ministry of a priest at a time of bereavement, or when you had your baby christened. Maybe you went on an alpha or a pilgrim course, maybe you met God on your own. When I officiate at confirmation services, I love hearing the stories of the candidates' journeys to faith. Rich, diverse, stimulating. A common theme is that of a journey of discovery, finding Jesus Christ and becoming his followers, fascinated by who he is. St John's story of the calling of the first disciples is crafted carefully. The beginning of his gospel is narrated in terms of days. The next day, the next day. He's not been chronological, rather he's indicating the progression of Jesus' ministry and the way in which John the Baptist signposted him as the Messiah. The Baptist declares Jesus to be the Lamb of God verse 36. He's already introduced that phrase in the previous section in verse 29. This is the Messiah language, channeling Isaiah's prophecies, Abraham's sacrificial lamb and apocalyptic promises. Behold, the Lamb of God would immediately get the interest of those who are looking for the coming one. John the Baptist's disciples are intrigued. The question Jesus poses for them and for us is, what are you looking for? Intellectual curiosity is often the starting point in the quest for faith. Jesus invites them to come and see. They acclaim him as a rabbi. They join him where he is. We discover that one of these disciples of the Baptist is actually Andrew, who in turn invites his brother Simon Peter along. The intellectual quest can take us only so far. Jesus presumably began to answer their questions about what it might mean for him to be the Messiah, but they are still on the journey. It falls to Philip and Nathaniel in the next section of the Gospel to make a slightly deeper response, though still at this stage pretty superficial. I saw you under the fig tree is verse 48. It's going to take a lot more journeying, listening and watching Jesus before these men truly embrace discipleship, but that's okay. Jesus takes us as we are, not in some idealised world of spiritual coherence. When we get to the place where we can say with Andrew, we have found the Messiah, like verse 41, that's when the journey really starts to take off. John's Gospel will take the disciples on that journey, moving from interest and intellectual curiosity to seven signs that point to Jesus as he really is, changing water into wine, healing, feeding the 5,000, and finally, and perhaps what makes his arrest and death inevitable, raising Lazarus from the dead. The disciples, for their part, will be provoked to faith, challenged to discipleship, and invited to a new relationship based on love. They don't become the finished article in the Gospel narrative. Thomas doubts, Peter denies, and Judas de betrays Jesus. In our lives too, our following of Jesus is not straightforward. We'll mess up and be unfaithful, just like the first disciples. But the good news is that he holds on to us. God is faithful even when we are faithless. He doesn't let go. Lent reminds us that when we fall short, confession, forgiveness and restoration can enable us to continue the journey. Action. Reflect on where you are on your journey with Jesus. When you found yourself invited to come and see, what happened next? What would you like to happen next in your Christian journey? What might you want to say to God, to your church friends, to your priest, 
about what next. Prayer. It's the collect for St Andrew's Day from Common Worship. Almighty God, who gave such grace by your Apostle St Andrew that he readily obeyed the call of your son Jesus Christ and brought his brother with him, call us by your holy word and give us grace to follow you without delay and to tell the good news of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.